Welcome to part 3 of Internet Medicine 2014 Croc Basis. So, we have this patient, this um, infectious disease question. But, so straightforward, there's something peculiar about this case. Pain in calf muscles. There's just one thing coming to my mind in this kind of condition. It's leptospirosis pain in calf muscles. Patient was fishing two weeks ago. They tell us something about fishing that has to do with water body. So it's leptospirosis. Leptospirosis. Others are gotten from um, uncooked milk and so on. So in this particular case, we have a 60 year old woman, mother of six children, who is having right upper chondral tenderness together with a uh, fever and patient has jaundice actually when you see a triad of jaundice together with fever and right upper chondral tenderness it is referred to as the Charcot triad and most of the time you notice the uh, the bile duct is affected in condition of cholangitis and patients that are fat over the age of 40 a female and that is fatter that have more than four children you think of cholidocolitiasis So, 42 year old woman suffering from bronchial asthma, they are just asking us what should you not use in first aid. They are not asking what can you not use in asthma, they say in first aid. So, you don't want to use something that is long acting and so on, like your flame. Here we have, okay, I'm going to say something about um, pulmonary disorder in this particular aspect. They are telling us about a patient that having dry cough and so on but notice that data of percussion is showing vesicular breathing that is weakened below the angle of right scapula this could also be rewritten as dullness dullness on percussion so any condition that causes like a consolidation that is like a thickening in the lungs is going to cause dullness such as pneumonia so this patient is having uh, pneumonia pneumonia so when you think of vesicular brain is that of pneumonia this particular patient is uh, having signs of leukemia which one in particular we are not very sure but they are telling us that lymphocyte is 72 percent way above normal so what other tests should you do so we are thinking maybe of chronic lymphocytic leukemia or so which are, but we don't know from this particular question what method of study should you use to specify the diagnosis according to Krog, the answer is myelogram but myelogram is an examination of the spine i don't know why it's myelogram please if you know you can simply comment below So we have uh, a patient with uh, uh, sinusitis, pulling discharge from left nostril, mucous membrane of left nasal cavity is red and togescent, like swollen, pulling exudate in the middle nasal meatus, middle meatus in maxillary. Actually, the frontal sinus opens into the middle, maxillary sinus into the middle, so the, we have the clue from the question middle meatus in maxillary together with the region that is uh, being uh, said the patient the pullet of this is in the middle meatus in the maxillary so we simply go for this anytime they give you a question like this and you can actually point out what is the cause of the respiratory attack think of something that is allergic if you can recognize it the cause think of something that is allergic so in this particular uh, patient patient during a stay on the countryside that's the, and further attacks occur while cleaning the room from dust so this is an household allergy something of allergic reaction household allergy 
The complications of acute cholecystitis, which require surgical intervention, are all of the above, except jaundice. What do you want to do in jaundice? You want to remove all the layer of the skin? <laughs> Surely no. So, in a primary gallbladder perfusion, cholangitis, emphysematosis are urgent surgery, or uh, urgent surgical cases. So, except in jaundice, you don't do surgery. Again, patient is having allergic reaction based on application of cosmetic face cream. So something external, something can uh, actually remove and the patient will be able to recover from that. You think of an allergic condition, so this allergic dermatitis. Okay, for those that are very good in psychiatry or psychology, I might need your help here, but one thing about this particular patient that is having schizophrenia, schizophrenia means scattered thought, schizophrenia means thought, schizo means scattered, and is thinking that is an outstanding scientist, don't think that you're having schizophrenia, don't worry, continue to dream big, but if you have to think that somebody wants to poison you or jealous of you, then it might become a very, very serious condition, and that is uh, paranoia, like where you have delusions of persecution and you are exaggerating your self-importance that is like uh, paranoid but i don't know why it is not paranoid and the answer is paranoid the one with c a i c i a c rather so this is a patient that is highly dependent on alcohol who have not consumed alcohol for two days so when you hear of in any maybe psychological disorder and patient is dependent on alcohol so just go ahead and start thinking of as far as clock is concerned of alcohol delirium so this is delirious uh -huh. if you read through this particular case you will notice something that's actually back pain back pain dark urine is usually common for uh uh, hemolysis, hemolysis. But what's causing the hemolysis in this condition? We are not very sure, but we can suspect just one thing: patients, after treating like a cold, maybe you are thinking of something viral with aspirin. So aspirin plus recent viral infection produces what is called like Reyes syndrome in patients that are susceptible to that. So the most likely answer in this condition is acute on the acquired hemolytic anemia. Don't forget that these are signs of uh, hemolysis. You can see the red blood cell color index is 0 0.9. It's not really the fact that patient is losing uh, iron or patient needs enough iron. Collagen is normal, but it's due to hemolysis. You can see the red blood cell is low, and these are signs of hemolytic anemia. So it's acquired hemolytic anemia associated with Reyes syndrome. This patient is having pulmonary tuberculosis and all of a sudden developed chest pain and dyspnea at rest. So we are thinking of something since it's sudden. He said acute pain in the right house. So you are thinking of a process that must have caused air to escape from the lungs into the pleural space. And that is usually a complication of pulmonary tuberculosis, which is a spontaneous pneumothorax, based on the history of these patients. It's spontaneous pneumothorax. Pleuritis seems more likely, but uh, also likely, but they are telling us that the patient has a history of pulmonary tuberculosis. So the, the best option there is spontaneous pneumothorax. Again, this patient is having, uh, this patient is. They have been taking alcohol for over three years, and that is what is causing this uh, psychosis and that we have here again delirium, alcohol delirium. So, another just another name in delirium, alcoholicum. So, we have a patient that is suffering from uh, benzene poisoning, majorly, benzene poisoning causes narcosis. Patient is dizzy, feel like sleeping everywhere. And since you are treating the patient as an inpatient, when a patient improves in almost all conditions, what do you do? You send them home and monitor them as outpatients, the same thing in this condition. 
all right we treated something like this in part one this is a patient with hemophilia how do we know there's spontaneous bleeding into the knee joints and you will discover that even though the blood parameters are normal since the patient is about to undergo surgery definitely they will be bleeding so what do you do you want to transfuse certain clotting factors how do you transfuse that through fresh frozen plasma and you can find that in the option the the that is also like cryoprecipitate fresh frozen plasma please don't mistake it for for the dried blood plasma it's fresh frozen plasma so that's a cryoprecipitate so we have uh, a 44 year old patient this is a uh, urological disorder notice difficulty urination so the 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 disorder is not really at the level of the uh, kidney so let's see sonography that is ultrasound revealed that there is a pycogenic formation that was changing its position in fact this is the stuff pointing us to the right and changing its position it means that whatever it is that is changing position is not directly attached to the uh, organ in question in this case the bladder so the answer is this means that is a stone stones can change uh, position and is they are usually apicogenic but to just save us some grammar it's changing position that's a concrement that's a concrement concrement and i want to say something here the bigger the question many times the simpler the answer don't think too much think as simple as possible uh, this is a boy that is having signs of meningitis and and so on but the father has an history pulmonary tuberculosis very simple so all these other results that we have from cerebrospinal fluid analysis and so on you may not want to waste much of your time anymore this is tuberculosis meningitis so we have a 35 year old man a 35 year old patient we have pain and morning stiffness of hand and temporal mandibular joint over 30 minutes. These symptoms have been existing for two years. See, anytime they are telling you of a musculoskeletal disorder, and the question is, what examination do you administer? If it's a musculoskeletal disorder, the first thing you should think of is to do an X-ray. That is, this also means X-ray, rentagenography. So, rentagenography of hands. We have a 69 year female patient with fever, temperature 38.3, hematuria, hematuria. In fact, almost all the conditions here can actually cause uh, hematuria, maybe not really in polycystic renal disease. ESR, ESR is elevated in conditions of inflammation, but when it is so elevated, this is so elevated. So this is 55, it's highly elevated. We are thinking of cancer, cancer with material, cancer. 